Um, if you've got an idea for a business or if you've got an idea to grow your business, we, uh, the Eastern Kentucky Business Network team is here tonight to connect you and to help you do that. There's a lot of great resources out there that can help people grow their business even into a national market or into a global market. If you are part of the Eastern Kentucky Business Network, please raise your hand or hoop and holler or something so that everybody in here can connect and everybody in here can contact you so that you can make those things happen. We want to see your business thrive and drive our economy and that's why we're here. That's why this event is taking place. This is the third annual event and we are just excited to be a part of it. Um, we, again, we do have a lot of great resources that can help you grow your business. Um, we've, had, we've got numerous examples um, with companies here in Eastern Kentucky that are now opened up their stores to an online market and they're selling things across the nation as well as in the global market. So don't think that your business is just going to uh, serve people in your own community. It can serve people all across the United States. And we have resources that can help you do that. And if you've got any questions, make sure you reach out to any of the small, uh, the East Kentucky Business Network folks who are here in the room. We've got a great evening lined up for you tonight. Uh, we've got some really good uh, guest speakers. Before we get started, we do want to thank all of our sponsors for tonight's event. One East Kentucky, uh, Chuck Sexton is the president and CEO there. Walmart, Mountain Comprehensive Care, Mason, Appalachian Wireless, Citizens Bank, SOAR, Chronicle and Times, Community Trust Bank, Q95 FM, Eastern Kentucky's Best, and First Commonwealth Bank. And I can't see this sponsor, so I can't. KJ Insurance. KJ Insurance. Yeah, the AFLAC. <laughs> Y'all are here. And also the vendors, we would do want to make mention of all of the folks that are participating in the event tonight. American Metalworks, Angler's Bait and Tackle, Appalachian Beauty School, Daffodils, Martin County Historical Society, Ladd and Lassie, Little Rascals, Lose Place for Pets, The Mountain Muse, No Limits Fitness, Prestonsburg Running Company, Pure Luxe Spa, Richie's Hallmark, Sew and Love Shop, Wildflower Designs, and I think that's it. So it's an evening to connect, to learn, to shop, and to network with other businesses in the community so that we can all learn from each other. Learn what works, learn what doesn't work. So there's lots of refreshments and food and it's all brought to you again tonight by the Eastern Kentucky Business Network and our sponsors. So we're gonna get started. Um, our first speaker, yes. Uh, I'm winging this tonight, y'all, so bear with me. Doug Cantrell, he is the Hindler of Hindlerville and the world. Am I saying that right, Misha? Okay. He's a professor of history uh, from Elizabethtown Community and Technical College. And uh, he is also with the Martin County Historical Society. So we want to welcome Doug Cantrell to the microphone, and he's going to shed some light on a lot of great things for us. Thank you. Let me thank everybody for the opportunity to talk a little bit about uh, Himmlerville and what the Martin County Historical Society is wanting to do with the Himmler House. And I, what I'm going to do is tell you very briefly what we want to do and then tell you the story of Martin Himmler because it's a fascinating story. Uh, we, uh, the Martin County Historical Society has the house and they're wanting to make it into a cultural center and a tourist center uh, in Eastern Kentucky to try to uh, get uh, people from foreign nations to come into Eastern Kentucky. We, we've worked with the Hungarians, our, our theme is Business Beyond the Borders. We, we've worked with the Hungarian Embassy in Washington. They sent two bands down uh, this year uh, to uh, perform concerts in Mountain Art Center and they also had, had a blues festival to raise money for restoration of the house. Uh, 
in Washington, D.C., and we did pretty well on that, I understand. Uh, but I really want to tell you the story of Martin Himmler and why he's important, and very briefly anyway. Uh, Himmler was a Hungarian immigrant who came to the United States about 1907 or so at the age of 18, and he left his native land for two reasons. He wanted economic opportunity, and he also was in love with a young lady that because of the caste system in Hungary, uh, he couldn't marry her, and because his family was also Jewish. And so he has a hard time when he comes to the United States uh, initially. He works in a coal mine, uh, in fact, two coal mines, Thacker, West Virginia, works in one in, in uh, Pennsylvania. Then uh, he works in a steel mill until he gets pneumonia and, and has to spend some time in the hospital. Uh, he works in, in, a, in a, making shoes. He works uh, molding iron. Uh, he does a little bit of everything, but he finds his niche as a peddler. He decides that he uh, can make money supplying peddlers with goods to come through the coal fields of Appalachia and sell products. Well, he then decides that when his boss wouldn't give him a raise, he was going to go on his own. And he did that, and he eventually hired somebody else, and he made quite a bit of money doing that. But he was in West Virginia one time, and he got the idea that he wanted to go into the publishing business, and that's where he really made his mark, at least initially. He decided that he was going to uh, publish a newspaper for, Hungar for Hungarian coal miners. He called it Magyar Banyas Lap, and I'll spell that for you, M-A-G-Y-A-R-B-A-N-Y-A-S-G-L-A-P. And it's translated into English, the Hungarian Miners Journal. That journal was published from about 1916 until sometime in the 1950s. It was published in eastern Kentucky for a while. It was published in, in what is now the town of Beauty or uh, then Himmlerville. But Martin Himmler then also got the idea that he wanted to do something for coal miners, and he decided he was going to create a cooperative coal mining town in which the company in which the coal miners actually owned stock in the company. And so he did that, and that became Himmlerville. Unfortunately, Himmlerville didn't last very long. Uh, coal industry facing bad times in the 1920s, just like it is now. You, you, most of you know uh, that the coal industry's you know, had some rough times lately. Uh, and let me say, I come from a coal mining family. All of my uncles and, and uh, all of my grandfathers were coal miners, as well as my father. But in the 1920s, Himmlerville went bankrupt because they were selling coal less than what they could produce it. And when Himmlerville went bankrupt, then Martin Himmler uh, continued publishing his newspaper, and he added several other newspapers uh, in the 1930s and 1940s. But then when the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 1941, Martin Himmler, who was 55 years old at that time, decided that he wanted to give something back to the country that had been so good to him to the United States. And so he enlisted in the American Army. And he was given the rank of a colonel because he could speak German, he could speak Hungarian, he could speak English. And he was sent around the world. He was sent to Africa. He was sent to Italy. He was sent to Austria. He was sent to Hungary eventually. And, it, and ironically, as his job was to, after the war was over, interrogate Nazi war criminals. And that's kind of ironic there because Himmler's family was Jewish. And most of his family members had actually died in the extermination camps of Nazi Germany. And so here was this American man, American Jew, who was now sitting in judgment of the very people who killed his own family members. And his job was to decide whether these people went to Nuremberg or whether they went back to Hungary for trial, and most of them were hanged as war criminals. But I told you also, and this is what, this is what makes him, him the story so, somewhat interesting, I told you that he left partly because he was in love with a young lady and the caste system in Hungary would not allow him to marry her and, and his, her family wouldn't because he was Jewish as well. And so uh, when Himmler was working, interrogating those Nazi war criminals after World War II, a person he describes as a frail little old lady walked into his office and she was looking for her husband who was missing in action and happened to be his girlfriend or his former girlfriend uh, back many, many years ago. And that sort of brings the story full circle. And it's, you, you could not probably make that up. But the Martin County Historical Society uh, is publishing, or the University of Tennessee Press is publishing a book for us that should be out just any day now. Uh, this is called The Making of American, and what Himmler does in this, it's an autobiography, what he does 
is he decides that uh, he is going to be an American about a year or two after he gets here. He finds that the United States is such a great country in comparison to Hungary and Europe. Europe and he decides that he, he says he, he soon realized he was never going to go back to Hungary uh, full time. And so that book, The Making of American, and that's his title, uh, is again, it's going to come out uh, shortly. And we're hoping to uh, get royalties enough from that book to uh, provide some money to restore the Himmler Mansion. Uh, Kathy Corbin and I have worked on that book as well as uh, Mr. Charles Finnevesi, who is a reporter for the Washington Post. Uh, U.S. News and World Report and CNN, and uh, we've all agreed that we're going to no date anything we make from that book uh, to the old house, and we are hoping that this house then will bring tourists into eastern Kentucky. And I said we've already worked beyond the borders. We've worked internationally with the Hungarian embassy, uh, and we've worked with uh, Hungarian communities in Columbus, Ohio, uh, in Cleveland, Ohio, and other places, and uh, so, uh, you know, we can hope that uh, we can raise enough money. We need about $800,000, I think, to do, according to what the architect says, what we need to do to rebuild that old house. It's uh, falling down, and, uh, but again, we're trying to work, you see, beyond the borders uh, with groups around the world to, uh, enhanced tourism in Eastern Kentucky, because I think that's an opportunity. Uh, if the coal industry doesn't come back, and it may not, that's an opportunity, I think, to put a lot of money into the economy in Eastern Kentucky. You can get people from Hungary, you can get people from Ohio, you can get people from California. We've had people from California. I've had people call me from California wanting me to bring the Himmelville and show them around. Uh, I've had, in fact, I've had that happen twice in the last several years. And hopefully, uh, we will be successful. And if anybody has any questions or you want to talk with me after this, I'll be more than happy to talk with you about him or Bill. And I imagine my 10 minutes is up, so I, I could go on for probably two hours. Thank you so much, Doug. We appreciate that. Uh, you've informed me of some things that I didn't know about Martin County tonight. I um, want to remind you again to make sure you register for the door prizes and also uh, make sure you sign in at the sign in sheet so that we can all stay connected. Michelle Spriggs is with us tonight and I also want to recognize her. She puts on this fabulous event in Johnson County every February and uh, it is the, called the Women's Symposium. We encourage you as a vendor here tonight to get in contact with Michelle to set up at that event. Last year, I think we had what, about 65, 70 people show up at this. It was, it's well attended. And she has a keynote speaker that is absolutely hilarious. And I de definitely want you to, to get in contact with Michelle tonight and, and take advantage of that and um, get in on the women's symposium that's coming up in February. It's always a fun time. We've got a band here tonight that's going to play for us a little bit. We got Chris Tomlinson coming in from Silver Liner in uh, shortly and we'll, he's going to be talking to everybody tonight. Uh, this band is called Creekside, let me make sure I got y'all right, uh, Creekside Country and you are from Martin County. So we're going to let you all play while we network a while, and thank you very much for being here. We're excited to hear you. The choir of the Human Bureau House, and we are going to sing it for you tonight. The 1920s, as we were told, was a roaring era, an era where anyone who sought the American dream could find it. The American dream could be achieved by anyone and everyone. They could be rich or poor, American or new American. The sky was the limit. Martin Himmler, a Hungarian peasant, came looking for his destiny. He brought his vision and ambition to the hills of eastern Kentucky, as well as bringing his fellow Hungarians. His vision was to make men not owners of wealth, but owners of their own destiny. Welcome to Himmlerville.
from heart to read, to read the strength to concur. And great powers of men with the prayerful might call. He shall scan deep in modern county and brought the locals into the Where they 
like to say a few words, please. Uh, I'm Evelyn Cassidy with the Martin County Historical Society. And Dr. Cantrell talked about the Mr. Hamner's autobiography that will be published this October. It should be on the book stands for sale in October. And we're going to have a, a book signing at the Martin County Historical Society and I need. Uh, on our table back there, we have order blanks. If anybody wants to pre-order this book, you have to order it through the University of Tennessee. The other ones that's on publishing it for us. Now, thank you very much. Okay. 
Right before our bed. 